As I look back on Loma Linda University Health's history, probably the most important point in our history, certainly what has uh, given us the most recognition um, is the baby Faye transplant. And I think what's not well understood is that you were the anesthesiologist that provided care. And I, I find this very fascinating and I wanted to hear from you about it. As I think about it, you're taking care of a very, very sick baby with a very, very sick heart, which is complicated in and of itself. You're having to provide anesthesia, hemodynamic support with medications on this little tiny baby. Then you do a transplant with a baboon heart and put it into a human, and you have to be able to manage the gases that are being provided and the hemodynamic support in something that's never been done ever before anywhere. I want to understand what this was like. A lot of stress. <laughs> yeah. So it's all, it's an interesting story, and uh, it's probably worth a little bit of time. It, I was really young, and I think I always joke that I got asked to do the case by right place at the right time. And a lot of stuff in life is kind of serendipity, uh, you know, right place at the right time. I was on the Institutional Review Board. For people that don't know, that's called the IRB. And it's, uh, I think I got put on that. Uh, who knows? Nobody else wanted to do it or whatever. But uh, it's where you vet research projects. I was sitting there listening to this thing, and I was thinking, I don't think this thing will work. Wow. And uh, it, it, a little known fact, all the physicians on the IRB that I remember voted not to do the transplant. Mm -hmm. And all the lay people and the attorney because an IRB has to be have a majority of non-physicians, all voted yes. And uh, the interesting thing about that, that's what got human infant heart transplant going was that case, even though the baboon heart transplant eventually didn't work and there's never been another one. It worked for a, I don't know, a couple of weeks or whatever the, the exact time was, I forget now. But uh, Dr. Bailey, because I was 33, I think, which was pretty young yeah. uh, to be doing that case. <laughs> and he said to me, uh, I want one person to do this and I want you to do it. And I thought, why, why me? I mean, the, the guys that trained me are still here. And I think it was because I never went anywhere. I had little kids and the other guys were traveling around. So I always gave myself, you know, the, there's nothing great about you. You just don't go anywhere. And he wants one person to do it. So you'll be on call for a year. So basically, I was on call for close to a year. And I think I did the first 17 uh, transplants that were uh, real infant heart transplants, human to human. And I, I picked uh, Dan Cole to be the resident that helped me on that case. And our whole planning session was, and I remember this clearly, we do not want to be known. <laughs> no. Because <laughs> think about it. How many yeah. anesthesiologists can you name on famous operations? Or, or um, you can't. It's part of the team, you know, the support staff. But boy, let me tell you, if the anesthesiologist knocks baby Faye off uh, intraoperatively, I would have been on CNN getting yeah. interviewed that hour instead of, hey, can you get my next case started? We got to go down and have a news conference. And it's actually really interesting. And I, I took, a, to this day, I'm kind of proud of it now, but um, they invited the pump tech to go down and be on CNN, but I was asked to speed up the next surgery that was going to be, uh, uh, could I go? So that was the only person I think not invited to the news conference, but uh, that's the way anesthesia goes. And uh, later on, it became a little uh, bigger of a deal as we did more and more of these things. But uh, my direct quote was, we, we do not want to be on the front page of USA Today, so we got to do this case right. And luckily, it went perfectly. Everything went perfectly on that case. We planned it out, and I don't think I slept much the night before, maybe a couple of hours, but I was pretty amped to get this thing going. Yeah. We didn't even know, really, if the baboon heart would just reject immediately. Mm. Yeah. And I remember they came into the room with the uh, part from the research lab and put it in and everybody cheered. But that heart raced and we were going commenting on how fast the baby. It was like 220, 230 was the heartbeat. Wow. And but it worked great. And uh, off to the races. I think it's there's so many points of what you just said that are so incredible. But the fact that you voted against Dr. Bailey even doing it and he still chose you to do it. I told him, I said, there's nothing personal. I still think it's going to work, you know, and oh, I, you got to trust me on this. And mm -hmm. he was a very important person in, in my career, uh, long term. And I didn't know him very well. And interesting thing about Dr. Bailey, he wasn't the easiest to work with. He was in his 40s when he did that case. So uh, to me, he was old. 
you know, I was like, what do people think of me now? But I was 33 and I thought he was an old guy, you know, it's hard to work with. And he was probably, you know, nine or 10 years older than me. But he was very intense, very demanding. He didn't tolerate fools well and you had to do it right. Mm -hmm. Well, think about it. If he wasn't like that, you get a bunch of sloppy work, he would kill people. So we went along with it. And uh, I actually, we got to a very good relationship by the time I'd worked with him for four or five years. I mean, we just never had words and I kind of could anticipate what he needed and he didn't need to ask me for too much. And I, I think it was a really good relationship. And he was very supportive in me actually being named uh, chair of anesthesiology. He nominated me a couple of times in years before that, when it, that job was open, when I didn't want to do it really. But uh, he was always a big supporter of mine, wrote me a few letters and things. And I, I really felt bad when he passed, but he was a very important person uh, in my career, I think. How incredible to be part of that alongside him from the very beginning. Yeah, it's unusual for an anesthesiologist to have a case that's that memorable. And, you know, there's a there's a book of news clippings that somebody put together. I didn't do it, but some one of our secretaries did it and gave it to me. And it's it's, I don't know, inches thick of articles from all around the world. And I actually had an interview in the L.A. Times, which was a big deal when you're 30 something, you know, actually an interview about what's it like to be an anesthesiologist? And what's your perspective on, on this operation? Some news reporter called me up and had an LA Times interview and that that's pretty rare. Mm-hmm. 